So today we're talking about fabric quilts in general. We're going to talk about quilts. This is an original vintage, probably 70 year old crib quilt. Every little aspect of this is hand stitched. On each and every one of the panels or album pages, whatever you may want to call it, they're all different pieces all stitched on by hand. So this is separate. Even the arms here are stitched on separately. Once they've been stitched on, someone has come back through and then stitched on black thread around for the outline. This again is stitched onto a square panel. They stitched a whole bunch of panels one by one by one, cutting out each and every design to match the same image on this in different colors. And then they were stitched together in this border wise too. They all have this big border. The border strips were all hand cut, stitched by hand. So this has an immense amount of work, immense amount of time. Someone took care and took great detail into making sure this was nice. There is quilting or padding inside here as well that was hand stitched on. And then it was backed on top of that. Very, very well done in all honesty. Every little aspect of this is very well done, but it is very obviously a homemade piece. Most of the quilts or the best ones are handmade that I run into. Now, I grew up with two parents who did sewing. My father did upholstery for car interiors. He decked them out. He did the bodywork, mechanical work, and he even did the interior on them. So I grew up with industrial sewing machines in my basement, shears, fabric, all kinds of things all over the place. My mom stitched clothing, curtains. She even helped my father reupholster furniture. She did the fabric part, and then my dad did the rest of it. You know, so I grew up on that kind of thing. Didn't have a lot of money, so my parents fixed everything. My father had a side business to repair cars and do interior hot rods. He was in a hot rod club. So I do love vintage fabric related items. So on to today's topic, we will be looking at quilts and some of the high values that they can bring. So here we are with quilts. Now quilt value can go all over the place. I've seen some in the $50,000, $100,000 range before. You will see these on shows like Antique Roadshow and places like that. Thousands of them sell every year for good money on eBay. Now, a lot of them you'll see museum quality. That's just the quality, how well they were done, how well the design is rendered and things like that. This one's almost $5,000. Many times the designs that you run into will be a specific pattern that's been redone over and over again by all types of different people. So you will see names of the design many times in the titles. Some people don't know, some people aren't aware of the specifics. Some of them are unknown designs as well too. So very interesting one. This is Hawaiian from around 1900. Here's another interesting one. This one goes back to the antebellum period, 1860 Civil War era. Again, almost $4,500 on this one. Applique, it has a ton of stitch work to stitch all of those designs onto there. Again, it would be quilted, padded. There's a back to it and the whole works too. All of these sorts of things are hard to tell a date and age depending on the condition of the item. You may not realize what you have just by looking at it like this. Many people may not be aware, may not pay much attention to fabrics in general. Now this one's $2,500. They consider it folk art outsider. It's an Alabama quilt. Very unique, very interesting design. The odder the better in some cases, as long as they are well executed. And you can see the intricacies of some of the patterns on here. Now here's a nice one from 1860 as well. Another antebellum one. Nice, interesting designs. This one's what's referred to as an album quilt. It has different panels of different designs across. So they're not the same tells a story. It's like an album, like a story panel kind of thing. $2,399 on this one. Now this one's what's called a rambler quilt and it kind of rambles on in different color schemes across it. Not a big rhyme or reason to the design. Most of these are very unique, very well done. You can tell by age on the designs as well as the color and the fabric used in them. So if you pay enough attention, you look at enough of these, you will be able to distinguish a good one from just one of the modern day ones. Now back in this time frame, some of the color used will fade very, very easily because it could have been like made from roots or vegetables or ground up literally mineral rock and things like that. And sometimes of Obviously, it just doesn't last over the ages. Some colors will even cause the fabric to deteriorate faster than others. So 
interesting one here. You can see the red is fairly well faded in some areas, but still a very nice one here. Now, as I said earlier, a lot of work goes into making these. This one here is very elaborate and it has tons of tiny little squares that were all stitched together by hand. So there's a ton of work in this one. It's still an earlier one, as you can see by the date, $1,600. Now, this one's not as attractive, I would say, as some of the other ones. Without that border, it would just be kind of plain and kind of uniformed across the whole front of this one. But it is a nice one. Now, here's a crazy quilt, and this one is dated. A lot of the crazy quilts I have seen and run into do have a date on them. They have a name on them many times, too. Who created them? They're themed. I've seen them for military, World War One, World War Two. I've seen them made out of silks from tobacco and things like that also. I've seen them made from cut-up clothing and blankets that they cut up and made the squares out of them. Crazy quilts are just all kinds of random oddball things across it. No real rhyme or reason, but you'll see them all over the place. Crazy quilts have been made for a very long time, maybe close to 200 years at this point. Again, $1,400, so it is an excellent sale. Another interesting design. Again, take some time if you're interested. If you run into something, you need to be able to search through it. So be familiar with some of the terminology you will see with these $1,300 on this very attractive one. Another interesting one. This is Welsh. This is coming from England. Now, quilts are not a U.S. thing only. You will see them across the globe as well. And this one from England went for almost $1,300. Now, here's another early album style. It's a sampler. It's different panels, different designs across the board. It's not all the same. What ties the piece together is obviously the border, just like the mosaic one we showed you as well. The border is usually the tying factor for most of these that I run into. Another one, this is the flying geese pattern. Look at the design, look at the pattern. The borders around these can be all different styles and colors, but the pattern itself is the flying geese, 895. 1870s graphic. Even with other items, you'll see the word graphic or graphical in the title. If I sell some Victorian trade cards or even some covers from 1910, 1920, sometimes they have graphical designs on them, and that is a term that will help center in on your item. People just collect graphics like this, like an M.C. Escher or something along that line. Now, still yet another area to think about when looking at quilts. Some are done by well-known people who did quilts for their whole lifetime. Here is one as well from Marie Webster. Very well done. She is in all of the quilt books, hence the price. These do show up. There were several others that were on eBay at the very same time also. So excellent piece here, almost 900. Now another well-known, well-collected design is the log cabin. And this one is a nine patch log cabin. Now, if you want to know what that means, if you center in and look at the designs, each one of the squares takes up nine individual squares to make. So the nine squares are the nine patches of the log cabin. Log cabin, again, is one you will see. There's different versions of the log cabin, but every time I see it, I know I can flip some money out of these. The log cabin design is a well-collected one. It's not as expensive as some of the other ones. A lot of starter collectors will start with this pattern here. It's in almost every book I've ever seen. Again, as I said, there are different versions of it. This is a barn-raising log cabin design here as it expands out this one is very unique graphical as well just got to know a little bit and you can be able to distinguish the different types and varieties or patterns in some of these there's a limited number of designs for quilts so it won't take a very long time to be able to know this area fairly well now, like I show you in the beginning of the video, crib blankets, the smaller ones like I show you, are still very collectible. And they can command prices of a normal full-size quilt as well. This one's almost $700 geometric. One thing people will do with these also will have these as pieces of artwork on the wall, these geometric ones, which is another reason some of these sell so well. Now, commemoratives, just like any other area, whether it's coins, stamps, books, really anything, they made them for all different types of things. They also made quilts just like that. This is one for the campaign of Benjamin Harrison. And you can see it literally in the center of this. This could have been made on commission, an advertising piece or something to show off for it. Could be someone who was part of the campaign. Who knows where this was created? But it's still a very fine example of this type of thing. Again, you will find some for inaugurations. You will find them for flights, famous people, even at 
early in the 20th century, you will find some for events and things like that as well. World's Fair, I have seen them for. So this is within that realm of that type of quilt. You can see it wasn't super, super expensive, but it's still a very unique piece. Now here's an interesting one. This is an Amish one. A lot of the Amish ones still go for some good money. Used or new, these still sell very well. The pattern on this one is double wedding ring. You can kind of see how it's doubled and interlocked at each intersection. These take a lot of work, as I said. You have to be able to lay these types of patterns out over a huge area without having any discrepancies. If you mess this up and you're halfway through, you have to take a whole bunch apart. You'll have to redo it in the whole works to get it right. It's a lot of work into designs like this. Now here's a really stunning one, and the title does fit this one. This one is stunning. It's listed as a galaxy pattern. New, old or not, it doesn't really matter. There's new designs coming out all the time, almost $2,000. This one is a real stunner here. It's almost like a Masonic emblem to some extent on this, but the pattern is just very, very nice. It's a graphical one as well, hence the price, as I said. Now, quilts are still being made. This is from 2003. This is one by a known artist who does quilts from Mississippi. So there's a ton of these things out there. There's a lot of locals that do them. You will see them at almost every antique fair, collectibles fair that you'll go to. Estate sales, garage sales, church sales, 100%. Flea markets, really anywhere you can go, I do run into fabrics and quilts like this. Now, one last side note from this one. These are feed sack, fabrics from feed sacks that have been cut up into squares already for someone to use. Look at the price and look at how many bids are on these. If you run into a bunch of fabric, and I've talked about fabric, I have another video even on fabric. So if you run into a bulk lot of fabric, many times you can cut that fabric up into squares, the proper size, of course, and then you can put them together in lots to sell enough to do a quilt. So you can expand the profits instead of just worrying about selling one. And I've done stuff like that before. I have sold square patches for quilts. I have some right now from tobacco silks that were made into a quilt as well. So these sorts of things, even the items to make a quilt are still very well sold. Another good example is if you run into a bunch of vintage clothing and it's all trashed out, but there's enough to cut squares out of. You can sell that vintage squares much easier than you will ever sell the damaged and ripped up clothing. People do want that sort of thing. As long as the fabric still in decent condition, people buy squares of it just for quilting. But that's what I have for you today. Well, there you have it, quilts for today. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. carrying customers are avid readers. A shoplifter has struck. Don't allow empty hangers on racks. You're here to sell things, not to get personal. Someone ought to teach you your manners. I'm going to report you to the manager. It Any distraction that draws off the sales clerk may offer an opportunity for a new shoplifter to be created.